Good morning, my name is Chris Dowd. I'm the senior pastor here at Christ United Methodist Church. Whether you are with us in person or part of our online community, we are glad that you're here. And if you're new to Christ United, welcome. Please do take a moment here at the start of the service to let us know that you're here. If you're in the sanctuary, there are cards in the pews in front of you. You can fill that out one of two ways. You can scan the QR code and fill it out digitally or simply fill it out and put it in the offering plate when it comes by later in the service. If you are worshiping on the church website, there is a button for you to check in. And if you're with us on Facebook, you can simply like or comment to let us know that you're here. It is good to be the body of Christ worshiping together. Hi, I'm Meredith McBride, Director of Children's Ministries. We are so excited to have your whole family joining us for worship this morning. Children are a very important part of worship at Christ United, and we love having them in our services and serving in things like choir and acolytes. Make sure you grab an activity bag or a book on your way in, and at 11 o'clock service, come on down front for children's time. See you soon, friends. Hi, I'm Reagan Gilliland, Pastor of Adult Discipleship. Thanks again for being with us today. It's almost time for our service to begin. I hope you'll take a moment after the service has ended to stop by our Get Connected area in the atrium to check out about upcoming events, sign up for a class, learn about membership, or chat with a volunteer about how you can get plugged in. You can stay in the loop on all the details, subscribe to our weekly newsletter, or learn more about upcoming events at cumc.com connect. Have a wonderful Sunday. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. It's great to see everyone here on this first Sunday of November. Uh, as you may be able to hear, I am battling a cold. It's unclear where I got this cold. Um, <laughs> it's okay, there's grace. Uh, but I'm going to, uh, I don't have COVID or anything like that. I took a test, uh, but I'm going to keep my distance because I don't want to share germs before the holidays. That would be rude. Um, last Sunday was Celebration Sunday. We wrapped up our stewardship uh, ser uh, series. It was fantastic. Thank you very much to everyone who has made a pledge for the coming year of ministry. It is not too late to do that, of course. <clears throat> We're about 75% of, of the way to where we would like to be. So you can either uh, turn in a card in the uh, plate when it comes by. If you'd like, you can go to cumc.com slash pledge if you would, uh, have not yet made a commitment and would like to. A couple of uh, quick announcements. Number one, um, we have a district meeting this afternoon at 3 o'clock. So if you're in my Between the Lines uh, Bible study, we're going to meet but we're gonna meet at 4.30 instead of four, and we'll be about 45 minutes, so uh, 4.30 instead of four. And then the other thing is, and I'll remind you of this at the end of the service, um, if you would, at the end of the service, like to take one of these beautiful white roses home with you as a remembrance of the saints in your life, please know that you're welcome to do so following the service, and again, I will remind you of that. So this is All Saints. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in the sermon. Um, it is now the time of our service where we name those who have uh, gone before us in the, com in the past year. Good morning, I'm Mike Flynn, pastor of Care Ministries here at Christ United. At this time, we honor and remember the members of our Christ United family who have passed this year and will always be remembered in our hearts and in our minds. We remember the following members. Laverne Andy Bowers. Liam Dean Blake. Terry Bryson. Carol Diley. Billy Gamble. Orland James Jim Gant, Jr. Perry Hamill. William Bill Harrell. Ronald David Jones. Deborah Knowles. Eugene Cosella.
Robert Bob Liam. Pam Moore. Victor Vic E. Morin. Mark Allen Nelson. Ife Jang Proven. Sharon K. Smith. Richard Stoll. Clark Swafford. Dolores D. Thomas. Catherine B. Wood. Paul D. Wood. Frank Zeibel. Walt Zulch. We now lift up in silent prayer the names of all our other loved ones who have departed this life and who are now at rest. Let us pray.
morning, I'm Reagan Gilliland, pastor of Adult Discipleship here at Christ United Methodist, and I invite you to join me in the prayer for the saints. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who have having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Today is a very special day in the life of the church. Today is All Saints Day. All Saints Day is the day that we use to remember those that we love who have died and are now in heaven. In the church, we use many different symbols and different colors to represent different things and different holidays. One of those symbols is all around me right now. We use candles in the church, candles on altars, candles that the acolytes bring in to remind us that the light of the world, Jesus, is with us when we are in this place and when we are elsewhere. We also use colors in the church to remind us of different holidays. During Advent and Lent, when we are getting ready for Christmas and Easter, we use purple. So you would see purple all over the sanctuary and all over the church. During Pentecost, as you might remember, it's the birthday of the church, we use red that reminds us of the flames that were over the disciples' heads. On very special, very holy days in the church, we use the color white. White is a very important symbol in the church. White is the color of resurrection. When someone dies, they go to be in heaven, to live in heaven with God, and that is resurrection. So on this very special, very holy day in the church, I want to make us something to represent All Saints Day. Using white, I'm going to make us a little something. It's a white heart. When someone that we love dies, they go to be with God in heaven, and heaven is a place of pure love. All there is in heaven is love and joy. We miss people when they die. We miss pets when they die. Even if we know that they are with God and happy and surrounded by love and joy, we still miss them being around us. All Saints Day is the day that we remember that those we love are happy and loved in heaven. But most importantly, we remember that those we love still are with us. Their love is still with us. Love cannot be broken. The love that we share for those in heaven and that they shared with us doesn't stop. It simply stretches just a little bit further than it did before. So with our white hearts reminding us of the resurrection of our loved ones in heaven and the candles around us reminding us that the light of the world Jesus is with us, I want to say a special prayer, a special All Saints Day prayer. Let's pray together. God in heaven, we all have someone that we love that is now in heaven with you. Some of them are family members, some are friends, some are pets that we love, and they live in heaven with you now. We pray that this light reminds us that heaven is a place where your light shines brightly, where your love is always present, where happiness always exists. And until that day that we join our loved ones, we ask that you be with us on earth and shine your light and your love and your happiness down on us. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us about life and death and resurrection.
As you go throughout this week, remember that the light of the world, Jesus, God is with you everywhere you go. And each and every one of you is a beloved child of God. It's been so wonderful this morning. We had the youth choir at the early service. Amazing grace on the bagpipe is always incredibly moving. And wait till you hear the choir anthem here shortly. Uh, but before that, I have a few words to say. All Saints Day is uh, November 1st, actually. Every year, All Saints Day is. So we recognize All Saints on the first Sunday of November each year, whatever date that happens to be. This is uh, actually one of the oldest celebrations in the Christian calendar. In fact, the church has been celebrating All Saints for almost 1,200 years now. And in our United Methodist tradition, the focus for this day is actually twofold. First, we, we specifically remember those uh, members of Christ United Methodist Church who have died in the past year. This morning, we named 24 saints who have gone on to glory since last All Saints fellow travelers who shared our spiritual journey for a season and have now gone on to their eternal reward. Recognizing our recently departed uh, saints is an important part of this day. This is also a day for us to remember everyone in our lives, family, friends, teachers, mentors, who have gone before us no matter how long they have been gone. Those who, in the traditional language of the church, are now part of the church triumphant with Christ in eternity. In so doing, we remind ourselves of our own eternal destiny as followers of Jesus Christ. And this is important, I think, because we spend most of our time as United Methodists talking about how to live faithful lives on this side of the grave, which is highly appropriate and, it seems to me, should be our primary focus as Christians, but I'm grateful for opportunities like All Saints, which give us the chance to remind ourselves that our lives here on this side of the grave truly are uh, lived in the context of eternity. Having said all that, this day can, can definitely be a bit, a bit somber, and so I thought I would share a story with you that uh, is a little less so. A couple from Michigan decided to go to Florida to thaw out during a particularly cold winter. It was a very romantic plan. 
uh, they were going to stay at the same hotel that they had spent their honeymoon in 20 years earlier. But because both of them were in the midst of these very hectic careers, it was almost impossible to coordinate their travel schedules. And so they decided to meet in Florida at the end of their respective business trips. Well, the husband's trip uh, finished a day early, and so he arrived on Thursday while his wife was flying down the following day. He checked into the hotel, uh, decided to send a quick email to his wife before wrapping up a few business items for the week. But he accidentally left out one letter in her email address, um, as it turns out, one very important letter, and then he hit, he hit send without realizing his error. Meanwhile, somewhere in North Carolina, uh, a widow had just returned home from her husband's funeral. He was an elderly minister who had died suddenly of a heart attack. Uh, this widow, who had been a preacher's wife for over 40 years, decided to check her email, uh, expecting messages of condolence from family and friends and the parishioners of the churches they had served over the years. But after reading her very first email, she screamed and she fainted. And their son rushed in the room, saw her lying on the floor, and noticed the email that she had just read. To my loving wife, subject, can't wait to see you. <laughs> Hi, honey, I got here earlier than I expected. I just arrived and checked in. I've seen to it that everything is prepared for your arrival tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing you then. Hope your journey is as uneventful as mine was. Uh, P.S. Dress for the heat because it's hot down here. <laughs> I love silly preacher jokes. So good. <laughs> so the, the promise of our faith gives us permission to laugh. Uh, to laugh even on a day when we celebrate are dead because we have uh, the assurance of knowing that death does not get the final say and that we don't have to worry about the heat <laughs> when our life here is complete. Funerals are an important part of the life of the church and so often the most affirming and uplifting funerals are those that are able to blend uh, healthy tears with healthy laughter where the life of the dearly departed can be celebrated and the, and the hope of our faith can be affirmed. In our tradition, we actually don't call them funerals anymore. That's the term we use, but the, uh, the official name of the service, and that you'll see printed on the bulletins uh, in the United Methodist Church, is a service of death and resurrection. Because we, we both acknowledge the reality of death and um, proclaim the hope of our faith, and in so doing, we have the chance to both address the very real loss that we have felt and remind ourselves that something good awaits God's faithful. The Apostle Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians is the oldest writing in the New Testament. It predates the earliest gospel by about two decades, which means that when Paul addresses the issue of death, the subject of death, uh, it's the earliest glimpse that we get of Christian theology developing in this area. And Paul uh, does not tell the Thessalonians not to grieve. He's often misquoted. Grief is a natural response to death because death was never God's uh, desire, never God's intention for the world anyway. Even Jesus, after all, wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, knowing full well he was about to restore him to life. Instead, what Paul says is uh, that the Thessalonians and all Christians should not grieve as others do who have no hope. Because tears are understandable and, and natural and unavoidable when we lose someone we love, but we're comforted and sustained by the truth of our faith. And that, that truth is proclaimed in one of the recommended Old Testament texts for our services of death and resurrection. It's gonna be our scripture for today. So this is uh, Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. This is a pretty familiar text, or at least parts of it will sound familiar for sure. Listen, friends, for the word of God, as it is proclaimed by God's servant, the prophet Isaiah. Have you not known have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. 
He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So these verses come from uh, a section of Isaiah that scholars refer to as second Isaiah. It begins in chapter 40, and it was written near the end of the exile in Babylon after this very uh, dark half century for God's people. Our faith ancestors were in the midst of this incredibly tumultuous and disorienting period of our salvation history. They were displaced, they were forlorn, they were desperately needing hope. And what 2nd Isaiah offers is precisely that. The 40th chapter, this section known as 2nd Isaiah, begins with words that set the tone for this entire part of Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. And then the end of that 40th chapter uh, ends with a reminder of the power of God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Near the end of their 50 years in exile, God, through the prophet Isaiah, makes this promise that that those who wait for the Lord will be rewarded for their faithfulness. And over the centuries, there would emerge this expectation of a Messiah who would set everything right. And of course, uh, as Christians, we believe that Jesus was that Messiah. In Christian theology, we believe that those who wait for the Lord will receive the promise of eternal rest in Christ. As the earliest Christian author, the Apostle Paul laid the foundation for this theology in his letters seven years or so after encouraging the Thessalonians not to grieve as those who have no hope. Paul wrote his second letter to the Corinthians, and in the opening verse of that letter, Paul uses this term that we have come to use for all Christians, saints. And the Greek word that he uses there is hagios, which literally means holy ones or consecrated ones or uh, ones who are set apart for the work of God in the world. And it's rooted in this theology of Paul that we believe that uh, the saints are all of those whom God has set apart, all of those whom God has destined for righteousness and salvation, all of those whom God has consecrated to do God's work in the world, and of course, all of those who join God in eternity when our life here ends. And it's our faith in Christ that makes us holy. It's nothing that we do. It's our faith in him that that makes us these holy ones, that sets us apart, which means, of course, that all of us are the holy ones of God, both in this world and in the world to come. As I reflected on on the lives of the 24 saints whose names we called to begin this service, and as I as I think about all of God's faithful anywhere who have died in the past year, and as I, as I think about uh, all the saints um, in each of our lives whom we name in our hearts on this day, and the chances are that all of us have a long list of saints in our lives who have died in the Lord, I'm, I'm struck by how different our spiritual journeys are. Some get to live long, faithful lives, arriving at the end in this great phrase from Genesis 25, full of years and in a good old age. Some are blessed to have that as their experience. While some face illness or tragedy in in middle age and go on to the other side of resurrection before anyone had expected or hoped. And then heartbreakingly, sometimes the young, and sometimes the very young, join the great company of saints in heaven and parents are are faced with this worst loss that any of us can imagine. And when we lose someone we love, we face this reality of of death and the accompanying grief. No matter how long that we've had with those we love, the holy ones in our lives who have meant 
so much to us, our, our saints who have gone before us, no matter how long we've had with them, I'm reminded of the wisdom of that noted theologian, Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> who said, how lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. It's been said that, that grief is the cost of loving someone. The, the grief that comes with goodbye is real, never to be minimized, never to be denied. But as Christians, we are people of the resurrection, <laughs> a truth that is never more important than when facing the reality of death. On all saints, as God's faithful, we have the, the comfort of reminding ourselves how lucky we are that goodbye is only temporary. How blessed we are by a faith that promises us so much. As Isaiah comforted God's people so long ago, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God waiting to welcome us home when our journey here is complete. Our faith assures us that death is, is just a transition from being saints who are consecrated for the work of God here to being saints who rest with God in eternity. Friends, All Saints is a day when we give thanks for the holy ones who have meant so much to us. It's a day when we remember that we are called to be holy ones on this side of the grave. A day when we claim the promise that all of us will someday join the great company in heaven. Thanks be to God for our saints. Amen. We come now to the time where we uplift our tithes and offerings. And as a reminder, if you were not here last week, you can still turn in your pledge for this upcoming year. You can put that in the plate as it passes by or in any of the boxes out in the atrium. I'm so thankful for this, this church and the way that you all are our saints and the ways that you um, are a light to so many, the way that you um, give love to so many in comfort because God has transformed you. And so, Offering is a way of giving back to God for all that God has done for us, the way that God comforts us, that God promises to be with us, um, and that God promises resurrection for each and every one of us. So thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for giving back to God. And, and thank you for being part of this wonderful church um, and this community.
We come now to our time of Holy Communion, and I am reminded that this table is um, not Christ United. It's not the Methodist Church. It is the Lord's table, and so all are welcome, no matter where you are in your spiritual journey. If you are a member, not a member, you're still searching, asking questions, you are invited to come to this table. In a moment, um, you'll be invited to come up front and to some of our servers. We'll have four stations. Those that are in the center sections will come down the middle. Those on the end will come um, through and then go back to your seats on the outside. Um, you will come with your hands open and someone will give you a piece of bread and then you will dip it in the juice and you'll receive those elements together. If you happen to need gluten-free, those are down in the front. Um, Today we have a special All Saints um, liturgy, and I'm reminded that the disciples probably wondered if they were going to see their friend again after um, he died, but they did. And we too will get to see Christ, just as we will get to see those that we have loved and said goodbye to. Christ our Lord invites to us to all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So at this time, let's um, confess together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, us pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those who we name before you in our hearts. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I invite those who are serving to come forward.
I invite you to join us now in the prayer after receiving. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you've been visiting with us here at Christ United Methodist Church and would like to take the next step in your journey of faith, uh, if you leave the sanctuary, you'll see a Get Connected table straight ahead of you. We can uh, answer any questions you might have about this particular congregation or about the United Methodist Church. We can also offer you the vows of membership. Uh, so funeral services of death and resurrection are a little bit different in the Metroplex than they are in the churches I served in Henrietta and Sherman. Uh, here in the Metroplex, oftentimes there'll be the service and then there's an internment if someone's going to the columbarium or sometimes the, um, the burial is separate from the memorial service. But in country uh, parishes, it's always the same. You always go from the church to the graveside. And it doesn't matter if it's raining, sleeting, zero degrees, 110 degrees, doesn't matter. That's always uh, the custom. And at that graveside service, there is a, a closing benediction that a lot of people never get to hear because oftentimes it's just family who go, that go to the graveside. But I thought it'd be a fitting way for us to end today. This is from uh, the letter of Jude. Now to the one who was able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish, in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. And the people of God said together, Amen.